Well, I, I'm awaiting that first uh, nitwit liberal or one of the elitists who calls this program today and tells me we have to admit more of these refugees because we're better than they are and we're better than the terrorists are and we, we are good people and it makes us feel good and warm all over. After watching coverage of this event in Paris over the last several days, what the hell is your learning curve? How, how, how steep is it for crying out loud? Seven minutes after 8 o'clock, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 30, windy this morning, slippery in spots, so be careful if you're driving. I think most of you already know that. You don't really need my reminder when it comes to this situation. I'm just absolutely beside myself. We have been sitting here for months talking about how dangerous this refugee situation can be. And people have been saying, oh, you're a bigot, you're a racist, you're mean-spirited, and you, you, you don't have any compassion, and I'm here to interpret our own religious faith and tell you, gosh, gee golly gosh, you're so wrong. And we've been saying all along, think about it for a moment. When there's a shooting at a school, all of the gun grabbers immediately say, one death is too many. Well, there's 130 dead in Paris right now. How did that happen? Well, when, when these people are coming from Syria and they're being processed through Greece and spreading out through Europe, and we've been told, well, yeah, but we can vet them. That's not an issue. We can vet them. They're cutthroats coming by the tens of thousands. Mr. Obama this morning doubled down. He is speaking live right now at the G20 summit, and he said we would stand with Turkey in helping resettle refugees. Now he says 10,000 coming, but they plan to ramp that up over the next three years till we get to 250,000. It doesn't take many. And I wrote about this on our website over the weekend. I have two recent posts there if you go to my commentaries. I wrote about this on Saturday and I wrote about it yesterday. But there's this line I keep hearing from the liberal media, especially here locally uh, throughout the region, and that is, what are we all so worried about? It's not like the, uh, the Muslims are out there mustering in the sagebrush ready to attack us. Well, you know what? They didn't need a brigade or a division in Paris. Eight people. Eight people caused all of that carnage. How dang dumb do you think we happen to be? Eight people. Eight. So if you bring in 300 and maybe only 10 are bad people, think about the damage that can be done. Nine minutes now after 8 o'clock. Bill Colley, our top story on News Radio. And leftists are still in denial. If you were watching any, of, and why would you, but if you were watching any of the debate on CBS among the, 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 the socialist candidates running for president, they were asked by the moderator if they would be willing to use the phrase radical Islam. Take a listen to Hillary Clinton's response, albeit it's the response of all of her mates up there on the stage. Hillary Clinton, you mentioned radical jihadists. Yes. Marco Rubio, also running for president, said that this attack showed, and the attack in Paris showed, that we're at war with radical Islam. Do you agree with that characterization, radical Islam? I don't think we're at war with Islam. I don't think we're at war with all Muslims. I think we're at war with jihadists who have... Just to uh, interrupt, he, he yes. didn't say all Muslims. He just said radical Islam. Is that a phrase you don't... I, I think that you can, you can talk about about Islamists who um, clearly are also jihadists, but I think it's it, it's not particularly helpful to make the case that uh, Senator Sanders was just making that I agree with that we've got to reach out to Muslim countries, we've got to have them be part of our coalition. If they hear people running for uh, president who basically short cut it to say we are somehow against Islam. That was one of the real contributions, despite all the other problems that George W. Bush made after 9-11, when he basically said, after going to a mosque in Washington, we are not at war with Islam or Muslims. We are at war with violent extremism. We are at war with people who use their religion for purposes of power and oppression. Um, and yes, we are at war with those people. Now, Franklin Roosevelt and Harry Truman, when we were involved in World War II, they didn't say, well, we're only fighting the Nazis. The Germans are good people otherwise. That never came up. We were fighting the Germans, dang it. And it wasn't, well, we're only fighting the emperor of Japan and his cronies. We were fighting the Japanese. The difference is we won those wars. We don't win wars any longer because of the weak-kneed type of people you just heard there 
Hillary Clinton speaking at that debate on Saturday night. Donald Trump, and, and my gosh, I'm not necessarily a Donald Trump supporter, but I am just, he has been such a refreshing addition to this political season because he is willing to just come right out and say it, what used to be, what people used to say in American politics and what used to be attractive, and this is resonating with people, this is Trump, saying that he would support Vladimir Putin in trying to clean up this mess in the Middle East. They don't want ISIS coming into Russia. That's the thing with Russia. So they're going to be there. And anybody that wants to join that fight, as far as I'm concerned, it's okay with me. But we have to go in strong on ISIS, ideally with lots of different groups, and we have to be vicious. We Absolutely. We have to be vicious. You have to make it clear that no matter what they do, that the results are going to be so bad for them, so dire, that they won't ever want to do it again. Th that's how you win wars. You don't do it pussyfooting around. Twelve minutes after 8 o'clock, you can reach our program by calling 736-0300, 736-0300. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News 1310.com. You're up next. You're on the air. Good morning, Bill. Morning. Uh... The people here in Twin Falls County, the registered voters, need to get out uh, to stop some of this influx coming into our county. There's a petition being circulated around to uh, close down the refugee center, but it's up on the ballot. You know what? This made absolutely no difference in municipal elections just a couple of weeks ago. None. Zilch. Nada. Uh this is coming up before the voters in November next year. Well, the voters had an opportunity, for instance, in many of our local communities just in the last couple of weeks to change some of these people out who've been unwilling to speak out against this program. Or been, they've been, And thank you for the call. They've been telling us things along the lines of, how is it? Well, these people enrich our community. Really? Where's your evidence? Where's, you know, when you hear that, or diversity makes us stronger. Again, Where's your evidence? Back that up. You're giving me an opinion. You're not giving me a fact. 14 minutes now after 8 o'clock, and you're up next. You're on the air on Top Story. Good morning, Bill. People don't realize is that this is fundamental Islamic doctrine in the Quran is what they're carrying out. This is not just a group of radicals. This is a theology, and they're in phase three now, and they've openly declared war, war on the world for world domination and we see that happening all over with, with what happened in Paris with the downed uh, liner, airliner and so forth but the Quran is not a peace document it's a war document and uh, we're going to be the president just said well we're going to be able to vet these people and bring them in here still he just said it on uh, his news conference this is absolutely the most insane policy. He talks out of both sides of his mouth. Security for our people is the number one priority, but bringing in any of these refugees, and even if 1% of them are terrorists, which I'm sure they will be, um, will bring chaos and murder to our local community. And I, I agree with that, and I thank you much for the, for the call and chiming in on that. I'll get to my next caller in just a moment, but President said on Friday morning during an interview with George Snuffleupagus of ABC News, he said, you know, we've got ISIS contained. <laughs> the JV squad, remember? I mean, this guy is two beers short of a six-pack. The elevator isn't going to the top floor. Just because you say it doesn't make it true. You're up next, and you're on the air on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. Morning, Bill. Morning. Um... I kind of have a question for the flaming libs out there, the bleeding heart ones. If I have 10 grapes and two of them are poisoned, how many of them are they going to eat? <laughs> yeah, they don't know which two, right? Exactly. Great, great point. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I, And you know what? They, they, they just they double down on their stupidity. They can't admit it. Because they think they're the smartest people in the room. They, they cannot admit that they, they've blown it this time, including the President of the United States. I think what is true is that this has always been a multi-year project, precisely because the governance structures in the Sunni areas of Iraq are weak, and there are none 
in Syria. Oh, just win the dang war. What makes ISIL uh, the challenge that it is right now is primarily the fact that they're occupying territory in two oh. countries that aren't governed effectively in those spaces. Now, you compare that to with uh, Donald Trump's comment the other day when he said he'd bomb the crap out of them. He didn't say crap. I cleaned that up. Compare that. Uh, this is the president of the United States, the professor, sitting saying, well, let me give you a geography lesson. No, you go in there and you slap them silly. That's what you do. You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Yes, yesterday, Chris Wallace was interviewing the Assistant Secretary of State, I forget his name, at the G20, and he said there was a robust vetting process. <laughs> and Peter King was on right afterward, uh, chairs the uh, Homeland Security Committee from New York, and he says, he in essence says, that's complete BS. But when has this administration ever been truthful with us? But you see, this is the thing. This morning I called ZZ at the Refugee Center at CSI. I've yet to have a return call. Ah, uh, what a surprise. Yeah, well, I think we all ought to call him. And, and I don't know the number right off my hand, but it's in the phone book. It's on your computer. Uh, and find out how many are, are Syrian are coming in here. And if, like, like Peter King said, he says, this is, cannot go. We cannot do this. This is not an option. But they fully intend to. And these people in Twin Falls who are a pro for this, you know what? I tell you, if something backfires, who's well, going to answer for what has happened? And, and thank you for the call. Uh, Mark Stein said over the weekend, uh, I was reading one of his pieces, and he said, they simply don't care. They say it's an acceptable loss, uh, you know, if somebody that you know or if somebody else's kid gets killed by these people. They wouldn't say that about a school shooting. Peter King. He should absolutely suspend it unless they can show 100% that a person is not involved with ISIS. Because right now there is no responsible way to do the vetting, and that's the reality. And why people like Ben Rhodes continue to say this is beyond me. That is Peter King, a caller just mentioned him, Congressman King, saying suspend the refugee program. He's not alone. The governor of Michigan, Rick Snyder. Rick Snyder has said he is going to suspend the program in his state. All right, I want to see other Republicans. Governor Bentley in Alabama has said he is going to suspend the program. He doesn't want any of these people coming there if there is the, just the slightest danger that one of these people is going to decide to war against us after they get here. Well, we've seen it already. That kid who shot up the uh, recruiting center in Tennessee and the plotter in Boise. Well, I mean, again, how steep is your learning curve. We've got more on this subject on the way in just a couple of minutes. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. The fact of the matter is, you've got people out there who they don't care. They get their neighbors killed, their neighbors' children killed. They don't care. You know, being that it's a windy, icy morning, and the fact that a great many people are spending a little bit more time as they're trying to get to work or shopping or whatever appointment they're going to this morning means that actually you'll be exposed to just a little bit more truth if you're listening to KLIX and Top Story. See, it's a good thing if you have to slow down and take 10 more minutes. Speaking of that, hearing this program I think is critical for most people. And hearing this program requires that you actually have to have good ears. And we've been recommending Dr. Christine Pickup, a doctor of audiology at Mount Harrison Audiology in Rupert. She's located at 1218 9th Street, Unit Number 2. The telephone number, 208-312-0957. Or you can reach her by going to the website, mottharrisonaudiology.com. And she asks if you're on medication for high blood pressure or a diuretic. And says these medications can affect your hearing. Hearing health is a reflection of your overall health. When you come in for a free wellness hearing screening at Mount Harrison Audiology, Dr. Pickup will review your medications and also discuss ways to protect your hearing in the future. So I, I found this uh, yesterday. I was doing a bit of a search because right now the people who are called uh, the far right in Europe, uh, the right-wing parties, uh, they are getting a lot of attention now. And I was doing a Google search on a couple of different names. Number one, Nigel Farage, who is the uh, nationalist uh, uh, politician in England, and he is the, uh, the man behind the United Kingdom Independent Party, known as UKIP. And if you've ever gone to YouTube and watched some of the videos of him in the European Parliament, he's hilarious. 
and he is just spot on with all of his comments. And then in France, there is a there is a woman by the name of Marine Le Pen, and her father founded a nationalist party there. She has actually expelled him from that party. She she thought he was a racist, so she expelled her own father from the party. But she is not viewed, of course, favorably by the European media, which is even more left wing than media in this country. I know that's hard to believe. The PJ Tatler, that is uh, Pajamas Media, has this today at uh, pjmedia.com. A writer by the name of Michael Walsh says, Yesterday's marginalized far-right politician will be tomorrow's statesman. She is likely going to be elected the next president of France. She just says, look, simply, we're going to have to annihilate these people. And then, you know, the, the liberals all go, oh, no, but that's so mean-spirited. I mean, you know, they, our countries are bad because 100 years ago our, our, our countries were colonialists, so we, we have to make amends for that and, and, and uh, the sins of our fathers and mothers, if we believed in sin, that is. So we've got to let these people come here and kill more of us, and, and then we can all feel better and say it's even after they've, oh, I don't know, gotten rid of a couple of million of us. And, and so they still have a ways to go, don't you know? 825, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News 1310.com. This is from Breitbart, England. Breitbart, UK, probably to be more accurate. The West is failing to defend its values in the face of Islamic terror. Anne Marie Waters is the writer. She says the propagation of the big lie continues. She cites the quote from the president when he gave his remarks on Friday night quote, It's an attack not just on the people of France, but this is an attack on all of humanity. And the universal values we share, unquote. And she asks, what universal values? There are no universal values, she writes, certainly not politically. What unified moral stance? Western nations do not share a moral stance with Saudi Arabia. Our morals are vastly different. We don't go around beheading people. We don't go around chopping off their hands because they were hungry and they decided to grab a loaf of bread from the vending cart. We don't go around burying women up to their waists and stoning them because they had the misfortune of being gang raped, and then we call them adulterers because they were victimized. We don't live that way. Those people do. 826, Bill Colley with you. 30 on our thermometer at the moment, looking for a bit of a warm-up today, and very, very windy across the region, we should point out this morning as well. So I mentioned Hillary Clinton earlier. I mean, you've got to ask yourself, what is it that this woman is smoking? I have said the invasion of Iraq was a mistake. But I think if we're ever going to really tackle the problems posed by jihadi extreme terrorism, we need to understand it and realize that it has antecedents to what happened in Iraq, and we have to continue to be vigilant about mm, it. And we have to be vigilant that it has antecedents, and it was about the invasion of Iraq. Well, you know, if Saddam was still there, it would be a messy, messy neighborhood, no doubt. That's, that's all I'm going to tell you. This is the same woman who took a stick and she went over to the beehive in Syria and Libya and whacked it. And she's criticizing President Bush. As I said, the dope must be really good in the Clinton campaign. But even better, that fellow who comes out of the, uh, the socialist who comes out of Vermont, uh, Mr. Bernard Sanders, that guy is even more whacked out. And he was offering some thoughts on this too. And you just, you listen to it and he, he was going on and saying... <laughs> He, just, he was going on and he was arguing that climate change is the cause of terrorism. And he said climate change is still the greatest threat to the world. You've got 130 bodies stacked up in Paris, and this, this commie is going around saying, oh, you know, we've got to turn the temperature down and close all of the world's factories and starve people to death and, and you know, cut off their heat and their electricity. And they're just brain dead. 828, Bill Colley with you. Donald Trump speaking about the refugee situation. I see that one of the uh, bombers, one of the folks over that just was killed, was uh, also from Syria and just migrated over to the area. Uh, we're going to take uh, 65,000. I've actually heard 250,000. There's so many men, and they're strong-looking men. Why aren't they fighting? That's a good question. Why aren't they back there fighting? Because they've been sent to fight us. This is the other part of all of this. This is not, this is not a sneak attack. ISIS has been warning for months, saying with all of these refugees coming, ISIS came right out and said, we are going to be sending people to kill you. We are going to dress them up as so-called migrants and refugees, and we are going to send them to Europe and North America, and we are going to do it so that we can kill you. 
And Western governments kept saying, oh, well, we've got a screening process in place. So I'm going to have Joe Biden go out there and ask him if he's a good guy or a bad guy. And if he says he's a good guy, welcome to the United States. Here's your, your, your voting card. Uh, we've registered you as a Democrat. Over there are your food stamps. 8.30. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. I'm waiting for that first liberal nitwit to call me this morning and defend all of this and to defend this refugee resettlement program and to tell us why it's good for us, how it's going to benefit this community, and to tell me that they, there will never, ever be any problems associated with it just because it's happening everywhere else. It just simply can't happen here, right? Randy Staple is from Idaho Weekly Briefing will join us in about 10 minutes. Kelton Hatch from Idaho Fish and Game is scheduled to join us in hour number two. I was listening to that message about fat loss. I have a friend from high school, and she was telling me over the weekend uh, she's taken up walking to lose weight. And I've seen her picture, and it doesn't look like she's got too many worries. But the um, <laughs> she, she really hasn't changed much in 30-some years. But she's, she said she walked 22 miles over the course of the weekend. Which is good for her, but how do you get anything else done? There's a lot of football to be watched. 833, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 31. You know, some some moron uh, got nasty with me. I, I mentioned on Twitter on Friday night, I mentioned something about the fact that these people in France weren't allowed to defend themselves. France has very restrictive gun laws. Well, you know, the bad guys have guns. You know that old line? Well, this it, it bears it out, doesn't it? If you outlaw guns, then only criminals will have guns. So y- you've got that thing going on. Some guy wrote me back. He started to give me some lip about it and then said I was blaming the victims. How is it blaming the victim if you say that, you know, somebody didn't have the right to defend themselves and perhaps could still be alive today if they had had the ability to do that? It's 834. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story. Hey, just quickly, want to mention, we've got Dr. Jonathan Tripper, one of his associates, joining us in the studio on Wednesday morning. When was the last time that you had a chance to ask a friend for medical advice? It is your chance coming up this week. We had a great discussion last week about concussions. We do this every Wednesday morning. We take a particular medical topic. We talk between 8.30 and 9 o'clock on Wednesday mornings. And we we should point out, you have an opportunity to call in and, and just get a question answered of the medical professionals. It might be what you really need. It might get you pointed in the right direction. So that'll take place again this Wednesday, and we remind you, Tripp Family Medicine is located on Fillmore Street across from the main post office in Twin Falls, and life's too short not to feel good. 8.35, this is, is, speaking of guns, I was reading Eric Erickson's uh, columns this morning. He has his own website. As I've mentioned before, he hosts one of the most popular radio shows, local radio shows in the country at WSB in Atlanta, Georgia. And he's a frequent fill-in for Rush Limbaugh. And so he, he posts four or five different ideas every morning on his website. And they happen to come down about the time I'm getting out of bed. So I usually can read those while I'm actually sitting down and having a cup of coffee and eating my breakfast. Here's the headline. Bloomberg Group claims gun violence was the cause of the Paris deaths. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> He says, some of the terrorists exploded themselves, not with guns, but with bombs, but this is what we get from Mike Bloomberg and the loony left. They are children who can only ask, are we there yet, repeatedly until they've taken away all of your guns. These people really will not let even a terrorist attack stop them from the nonsense. He says, if they want to go there, then we should remember this line from President Obama back in June. Quote, this type of mass violence does not happen in other advanced countries, unquote. That's what the President of the United States said. Well, it sure does happen in other countries now, doesn't it? And in and, and those other countries, you don't have anybody there who is chained, uh, trained with a squirrel gun who can fire back. So they've been saying that we need to confiscate guns from the American public and be more like France. I, I think we can point out, as a follow-up to that, you haven't heard a whole lot from, uh, other than that Bloomberg group, most of your gun grabbers have been relatively silent the last, oh, 48 hours, a little more than 48 hours. And then Erickson says he went out and he bought another gun. There's a picture of it here on his website. It is the DDM, and I guess it's a DDM uh, V5. And it is just a thing of beauty. I mean, you could could sweep the entire neighborhood with one of these things. He says, when the zombies or terrorists come, I hope to have the house ready. For those of you who sometimes watch our videos, uh, I'm trying to get a shot of that for the camera. 
no pun intended. And uh, so if you check out the videos later in the day, you might actually be able to see what that thing looks like. In one of my posts over the weekend, I said what we really need to do is if you don't already have a firearm, we have a number of places, Canyon Pond, for instance. I was in there visiting a few weeks ago. We have a number of places in the Magic Valley where they can actually equip you to defend yourselves against the creeping horde. 837, Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning. It's 30, and you're listening to News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Uh, here we go Republicans question refugee plan. Uh, that'll get ignored by most of the mainstream media. Editorial today from the Wall Street Journal Wake up, Mr. President. It says Jimmy Carter shed his illusions about the Soviet Union after its invasion of Afghanistan. Mr. Obama needs a comparable rendezvous with reality. I was writing at, uh, at our website over the weekend, as I pointed out, if you were listening at the top of the show, just after the 8 o'clock news from Fox, I was mentioning two columns I wrote over the weekend, which you can check out, uh, my commentaries at newsradio1310.com. And in one of those, I, I mentioned, of course, people should arm themselves. But in the first one, I wrote a little, little, little story about when I was a boy. Uh, the first house that we lived in, at least when I, was, when I came along, we moved before I even turned eight years old. But we had an apple orchard, and we had plum trees as well. And my parents would feed us through much of the year just on whatever they would be able to gather from the backyard and from, from the orchards. And one year, we got infested with ants. Now, you had to cross a wooden bridge to get to my neighborhood. It sat on a hill on the edge of town, western edge of town. And so that bridge was a bit of a natural barrier. Plus, the train tracks, they had to build a berm to run the train around town like a big horseshoe, so we were protected by that, and then there were horse pastures. So we lived pretty much in a walled community, if you think about it, without any express walls there, but that's how we had this beautifully isolated neighborhood with all of about 20 families who lived on this hill. And I can remember when the ants infested, uh, infested the orchards, and my mother went out and she took a big can of kerosene, and she started with that kerosene, pouring it on a couple of the ant hills. Then she threw down a match. And, you know, anthills are connected. You could see flames shooting out of anthills 30, 40 feet away. But you know what? She, she, she protected our food supply that way. There's a metaphor in there for what we need to do with these evil people halfway around the world who are coming for us because they're infiltrating our country. And I think it's obvious after what happened in France. Randy Staples from Idaho Weekly Briefing will be joining us in just a moment. It's 30 at 840.